Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the lost son. Jesus told more than 30 parables to help people learn how to live a life that is pleasing to God. People loved not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that needed to change. Now, Dr. Luke devoted the 15th chapter of his gospel to three powerful parables about being lost. The first parable is about a lost sheep. The second parable is about a lost coin. And the third parable is about a lost son. Last week, we learned about a lady who lost an ancient coin that was worth more to her than its financial value. No doubt it was an inherited treasure. Jesus said that she lit a lamp and swept her house thoroughly until she finally found her lost coin. What did we learn from the story? The sheep was lost outside, but the coin was lost inside. And in the Bible, the house of God or the people of God are often referred to as the house of God. Now we're ready to hear the last of the three parables Jesus spoke to the religious leaders who complained about him eating with sinners and with tax collectors. The parable is about a father who had two sons. One was lost by leaving the home, and the other was lost while staying at home. We look at the story of the younger son this week, and then the story of the older son next week. Jesus said there was a man who had two sons. and The younger of them said to his father, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. Surprisingly, we learned that the father divided his property between them. But not many days after that, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey to a far country. And there he squandered his property on reckless living. Luke chapter 15 and verse 13. Every day young people run away from their home, thinking they can find a better life than the one they have where they are. But every day young people discover that it's much harder to be on their own than they ever imagined. That is what happened to this young man. He found it harder to save money than he thought it would be. And he discovered that all was spent sooner than he expected it to be. And Jesus said, and when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in the country, and he began to be in need. Now, no one can predict the circumstances people suddenly find themselves in. Even the weather caused problems for this young man. Things kept going from bad to worse. Jesus said he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. Luke chapter 15, verse 15 and 16. Someone listening to me is in the same situation that yet the young son was in. You've run out of options. You're out of food and money. Worse than that, you can no longer get the drugs or alcohol that you're craving. Ask God to show you what to do next. Listen to what God did for the young man in the story that Jesus told. The young man, Jesus said, came to his senses or some translation said, he came to himself. That means he began to have clearer thinking because of how much his circumstances had changed. And perhaps that moment has come for you as well. The young man said to himself, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish while I'm here with hunger I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven 
and before you. Luke chapter 15, verse 19. Young people listening to this message, arise and return home or to the place where you were before you began your run, running away. Lift your eyes and look around for God's provision for you. God has appointed someone to help you get out of the problems that you have brought yourself, brought upon yourself. And so the younger son began his journey home. And Jesus said, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and, and embraced him and kissed him. Luke chapter 15 and verse 20. The dad was probably sitting at the gate of the city with the other older men. They were talking about the day's events, but the dad was scanning the horizon for his son, barely listening to what the other men were discussing. Suddenly, he recognized his son, and he did not care what people thought about him. He broke the custom that forbid old men from running, and he did not stop running until he reached his son. He hugged him and kissed him multiple times on his cheeks. Well, the son was not prepared for the extravagant love his father still had for him. He tried to say the words he had prepared to say, hoping to persuade his father to accept him back and just give him a small something to eat. He said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Luke chapter 15 and verse 21. This loving dad stopped him before he could finish all that he intended to say. You see... The dad was not looking for another servant. He wanted a son. And so he said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and bring a ring for his hand, and shoes for his feet. Luke chapter 15 and verse 22. <clears throat> the dad restored his son by giving him three things to take away the shame he was feeling. The robe was not just a change of clothes from the rags he had been wearing. It was the best robe his father had. It was a sign of royalty. The robe restored the son's dignity. And the ring was not just jewelry. It was the family seal. And the son was authorized again to make payments and to receive money. The ring dis restored the son's financial disability. <clears throat> In those days, servants walked barefoot, but sons wore sandals. And the sandals restored the son's social standing and status before the people in the city. The dad wanted all the shame associated with his son's failure to be removed. I see people listening to this message who are just like this runaway son. Some are young men and some are young women. Your life is filled with remorse and regret. You had such high hopes when you ran, and now you've been taken advantage of. People have used you and mistreated you. You're broken on the inside, filled with shame. This message is for you. Father God knows where you are and what you have experienced. Like the earthly father, our heavenly father is full of compassion and mercy for you. He wants to do for you what the father in Jesus' story did for his son. Ask Jesus to help you. Say with me, Jesus, please help me. Now look around. He's closer than you think. He sent somebody to help you. Remember, he's not looking for more servants. Jesus is looking for sons and daughters. He knows what you've been through. Jesus was shamefully treated, beaten, and nailed to a cross naked. He understands shame. He's not looking to offer you anything but your heart. He's not looking for you 
to offer him anything but your heart. He wants to take away all your shame so that you can walk with dignity with him as a son or a daughter. <clears throat> Turn to Jesus today. Ask him to forgive you. Asking Jesus to forgive you is a gateway to more blessing than you could ever imagine. Listen to what this dad did next. He said to his servants, bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let's eat and celebrate. For my son was dead, and now he is alive. He was lost, and he is found. And they began to celebrate. Luke chapter 15, verse 23 and 24. Jesus wants to do more than restore you. He wants you to celebrate what God has prepared for you to enjoy. <clears throat> you were as good as dead, but now you are alive. I invite you to come alive in Jesus right now. Choose life and choose to celebrate all the blessings that God has for you. Father God, send your Holy Spirit into the lives of young men and women who are ready to stop running away from you and turn to you. If you're ready to turn to Jesus right now, say with me, Jesus, thank you for dying for me in my place on the cross. I give you all my sin and all my shame. <clears throat> now fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me walk in all that you have for me. Holy Spirit, clothe these young men and women who are turning to you today with a robe of righteousness a ring of provision, and shoes of protection. I command all your shame to leave you right now. Feel it go right now in Jesus' name. I command your diseases to be healed in the name of Jesus. I command your mind to be restored. Feel a shift happening to you right now. Somebody's got a little tingle going on in their minds right now. God's touching your brain and healing damage that has been done to it. Now Jesus said the angels rejoiced over the lost sheep that was found. The ladies' neighbors rejoiced with her over the lost coin that was found. And now a father rejoices over his son who has come home. Father God is rejoicing over everyone whose shame has been removed today and have felt the father's embrace. If you just prayed with me and felt a touch from God, write to me and tell me what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.